As many of you know, I am currently helping out on a full bus build up here in Canada, but I just had this moment today where I realized that I am starting to do everything that I suggest you not do when starting a bus conversion. As you can see, the entire bus is pretty much completely empty, but the problem is, is that means that all of our gear and supplies, that's right, they're outside. So if you're starting to build something and you're getting to that stage in the build, you might want to start thinking about what you're going to do. We have a couple plans in the works, but I'm not going to reveal them right now because I know Jax is going to be revealing it on his channel. But today we're going to be talking about something completely different and something that I hope will really help you out during your build. And we're going to have to go up to the roof to figure that out. So let's be honest, I've seen a lot of YouTube videos and those cutscenes I never understood why they made sense because you all know I had to go back and get the camera. But today we are going to be talking about a very special topic. A lot of people install skylights, they install rooftop decks, but one thing that everyone tends to install is solar panels. So today I wanted to talk about how to install your solar panels, how to do it safely, and give you some options of how you can do it yourself. So let's jump into it and find a better location to film this than standing on a roof. All right, so what's up everybody and welcome back to Navigation Nowhere. We found a spot we're gonna be filming today in the school bus, which honestly kind of drives me absolutely insane because when this thing is just a metal tin, the audio and sound just bounces all over and it is just so annoying. But good news is when you spray foam a bus, spray foam is not only good for insulation, but it's also good for sound deadening. So I'm super excited about that. But like we were just talking about today, we are gonna be talking about solar panels and how to mount them. Now there's two types of people out there, those who have completely gutted school buses where they have the ability to kind of weld in or bolt in things, and those of you who already maybe have completed school buses or completed rigs where you can't actually get into the ceiling without ripping things apart. So don't worry, today we are going to look at examples of how to do it when you are completely gutted and also give examples of how you can do it if you already have a completely converted school bus. So if you have either one, there's a way to do it and there's a way to do it safely. Hey Jax. Yeah. How many times have you heard someone losing a solar panel on the side of the road? Oh my god, half dozen. There's an example right there. So the first thing that you're going to want to find when trying to mount your solar panels, regardless if you have a fully converted or an unconverted school bus, you're going to want to know where your structure points are. If you're currently doing an RV or a van, those structure points are going to be in different locations than a school bus, but on a school bus you're going to be looking about 25 inches apart for all of the rib structures. These are going to be the most secure place to start mounting your solar panels, but are not necessarily the most feasible when you're trying to design where you're actually going to put the panels on the roof. Some panels are going to be much larger and much smaller than these locations, so it might be hard for you to actually use these anchor points. If you can, use them. If you can't, there are many options of how you can actually still mount them safely and effectively on the roof of your vehicle. The reason why you want to use these structure points and why it is so important to try to is because in between these structure points you're going to be dealing with just simply 16 gauge sheet metal. And the sheet metal honestly is not really worth much when you're going down the road at highway speeds and you have to deal with the wind speeds and the lift speeds on your panels. A lot of times when people lose panels it's because they simply use screws and you're just relying on the flanges of the screws to hold back all the forces coming from the wind and the lift factors on those panels and a lot of times the screws will rip through the sheet metal and you will lose your panel. So if you can, you want to find the strongest parts which are going to be closer to your rib structure. If staying close to your rib structure is not going to be an option for how you're going to personally mount your panels, there are a few ways you can do it safely. The first and best way to do it is going to be using either plate steel or angle irons and creating actual mounts that are going to essentially span the distance between the rib structures and take the support that you would normally find in the rib across the space in between and will give you the solid foundation to mount your panels in that location. A lot of people don't know how to use metal or know how to weld, so this might not be the easiest option for a lot of people, but if you can, this is an option that you might want to consider because it will give you the best foundation in between your structure points. A second way that you can do it is going to be using bolts and nuts and washers. Now this is going to be the second best option because it's going to give you the ability to work in between the sheet metal but it's also going to give you a great surface area to actually put the bolts through. The reason why this is so great is because the larger the washer, the larger the surface area you're going to have so that the bolt won't pull back through the sheet metal in high winds or in a high lift situation. So when you put these bolts through, you're going to want to use a nice large washer, screw the bolt on, and then use that to mount your panels. 
If you don't have the ability to weld and you also don't have the ability to put bolts and nuts into your solar panel mounts, you're going to want to use screws. But you're not going to just want to use any type of screw, specifically you're going to want to look for a blind fastener. The reason why these are a good option if screws are the only way you can go is because these will expand once the screw enters into the sheet metal and give you that larger surface area behind the screw so you're not simply just relying on the screw threads, you're also using the expandable flashings that are on them to hold the screw back if it were to ever start pulling on the sheet metal. If you're completely gutted, all of these options are going to be available to you and you'll be able to do it during your build. If you already have a converted school bus, it's going to be hard to get those bolts or welded beams in, so you might have to end up going with either the screws that have the blind fasteners on them or simply just using the actual rib structure of your bus. So you really have to figure out what stage of the build you're in and what your options are to make it the safest mount you possibly can. Now there's two things that regardless how you decide to mount your panels, you're gonna to wanna to think about. And the first is going to be what your anchor point and how strong that anchor point is into the sheet metal or whatever metal you're actually putting it into. The second is going to be vibration and movement within your mounts. Now if you're mounting your panels in a position which is in between two structure points, the material between is going to have a lot of flex and vibration in it. So if you're planning on doing that, don't mount it directly in between two of the rib structures because that's going to be where the sheet metal has the most movement and is going to cause the most problems in the long run with those mounts. So if you can, mount it closer to the rib structures because it's going to be a stronger piece of sheet metal and it's not going to have as much vibration and you're going to be able to drive down the road with the assurance that your panels aren't going to pull through the sheet metal and aren't going to fly off on the side of the road. So now what I want to do is I want to look at three of my friend's rigs and explain to you how they mounted their solar panels just to give you actual examples of how other people have done it and how you can do it yourself. So the first up is going to be Dean at the schoolie. Dean did his a little different than the way that we explained previously with mounting your solar panels. What he did was he created an external framing system which he mounted into the frame rails of the bus. By doing this he created a very structural frame that is external of the body of the bus and then mounted his panels into that frame. This is a really good way to do it if you aren't able to size out your panels to actually hit structure points. You can create the structure points externally by creating this frame structure in which then you can put your panels. So if you want to go check him out, you can go check out his channel here and see a little bit more about how he built this bus and what his bus looks like. But Dean did a really cool design on this and using the external frames and I'm sure that this frame is going to last quite a long time because it is secured into the structure system. So the next bus I want to look at is my friends over at the Nomadic Movement. Now they mounted their solar panels using blind fasteners in which those screws go directly through the sheet metal, open up behind, and hold with a pretty good force those panels down. Now if you notice, they mounted these very close to the rib structures which gives a lot stronger placement in that mounting. If they would have moved these back a couple inches, they would have been on much more flexible sheet metal and they would have had a lot more shake while they're driving down the road. So this is a really good option if you don't have the ability to put bolts in or you don't have the ability to weld beams in. You can do something like this where you can use blind fasteners, mount them down, and actually have a very secure structure and drive down the road. The last bus we're going to look at is actually the one that I am currently in. This is going to be Jax Austin's bus. Now in this bus we use the fastener and bolt method and if you look we put these very close to the rib structures which is going to give it once again the stronger strength and these washers are large washers which are going to help with that resistance and pulling through the sheet metal. The reason why we did this instead of using plates or welding in beams is because we wanted to mount these panels in very specific locations to maximize the space on the roof. So if you're looking to mount your solar panels, I hope that these examples and tips have been helpful for you and that you can think through how you're going to be able to mount your own solar panels on your roof. Regardless if it is completely gutted or if you've already built it out, you can still put solar panels on and you can still do it safely. So it's time to get back to this build and I just want to say thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, remember to give it a thumbs up and if you have any tips or tricks for anyone on mounting their own solar panels, remember to leave them in the comments below. Once again, I just want to say thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.